Okay, we're recording now. Okay, <clears throat> I'd like to welcome everyone to the meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter. As chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I call this meeting to order. Um, tonight we are meeting by, via Zoom. Uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can attend tonight's virtual meeting by using the Zoom login information provided on the meeting agenda listed on the meeting calendar, which is provided on the Town of Amherst website. We'll have a roll call, the members of the Design Review Board, who have been impaneled for the consideration of the items on tonight's agenda. Board members, please say aye or yes to acknowledge your attendance. Lindsay Schnarr will not be here. Uh, Janet Marquard. Yes. Okay, and Tom Long. Present. Uh, okay, and I and uh, as a disclosure, I know we're having something from the Unitarian Society to, today, and I am a member of the Unitarian Society, but I don't think this will hinder my ability to make a decision. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner and staff liaison to the Design Review Board. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by town meeting in October of 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under section 3.2 of the zoning bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center, the design review overlay district, and the town common design review overlay district. Design review is also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on its recommendations, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant board, applicable land use board, and building commissioner. And tonight's agenda will include the following. Are we gonna begin with uh, DRB FY 2022-01 Unitarian Universalist Society of Amherst? Uh, to review a proposed fencing. Oh, okay, I can't read this. So I'm gonna block in the, okay, all right. Uh, so do, who, who do we have for Maureen? Are you just going to present it to us? No, oh, we have me, Catherine. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne Personette here yeah. for the Unitarian Universalist Society and friend of Catherine's. <laughs> Good. Uh, so um, yeah, no, Maureen got me all ready for it. Thanks, Maureen. Uh, you should have a copy of my uh, of our application, right? Is that right, Maureen? Yes, do we I do. Yeah. That, along with I'll, the I'll pull up the uh, I'll pull up your packet yeah, on the screen. Okay, okay great. Because I I'm sitting here in Gloucester on a river, so I'm not <laughs> I don't have all my usual tools with. Me. Oh, look at that. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the reason for this screen. Um, uh, is a replacement of a, an existing screen that was required by the design review board and the site plan review um, in 2008 or whenever it was that we, um, I think it was 2008. Um, no, I'm sorry, 2013. Yeah. Uh, and there's a, that's a great picture of the um, old fence 
The old fence was not a completely enclosed fence and it unfortunately was used by some of our homeless residents as um, a, a bathroom. And so uh, last fall we took the screen down, the screen fence down. Um, and so I don't know if you have a photograph Maureen of what it looks like right now, the one I sent you, um, there you go. Oh. Um, of all of this equipment, this is all air handling equipment and also the um, control panel for our solar system um, is there. It should not be exposed like that. Um, it's really, we're very lucky that we haven't been vandalized um, so far, uh, but somebody did turn off our solar power um, a while ago. Uh, this is a proposed screen fence. We're putting up a six foot, we'd like to put up a six foot fence. It's aluminum. Um, it's you know partially transparent and it certainly goes with it is in keeping architecturally with the character of the building. Uh, it will look very, very, very much like this, including the brick wall. So this is the original site plan and the dark box is there's a blow up the next okay. one. There's a blow up of that. Um, so you can see that there is, uh, the air handling equipment and the new transformer location, which will be outside of the fence. Um, but the new fence will basically come off the one side of the existing building and there'll be a little gate and it will be uh, the, the electrical inspector. When I uh, met with them last spring, um, asked for a 36 inch minimum clearance between the um, electrical equipment and the fence. Right now it's 30 inches, which is probably what the code was back then. Um, so uh, we're, we're making sure we adhere to that. So that's about it. Um, we have Hasty Fence um, on contract to um, install this and we'd like to install it in October. So, which is any day now. <laughs> okay. So, any questions? Well, <clears throat> yeah, one about the sort of semi-security. Um, do you think you'll have the same problem with homeless using it? Um, no, no, I don't, Catherine. And okay. um, part of that is that it's not as opaque as the last fence was. It's it's more transparent for one thing. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Um, and the, um, the gate that is shown by the entrance to the downstairs there um, will be lockable. Uh -huh. And it's six feet tall and it would be extremely hard to climb it um, yeah. because there aren't very many horizontals in there. So there's nothing to, you'd have to really shimmy up there and really want to get in there. So we, we think that it'll, it'll take care mm -hmm. of the, that problem. Okay. Does it come out? I know that sidewalk's very narrow in there. Does it come out further no. onto the uh, Strip it's a li it's a it's a few inches farther out than the old one was. Um, you can kind of see the corner of the building on the right hand side. It would be coming out more or less right along the, you know, almost flush with the the uh, end of the building. Depends mm -hmm. on the detail there. I think it can't be quite exactly flush because I think there's a base there that they have to work around. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, we're still on our. Uh, you know, on our property, and we have we're not obstructing the sidewalk in any way. The little the X in the middle of that lot thing is the new transformer that is there, and it already sticks out that far. Um, okay. So it would be outside of the fence yeah. on the north side of the fence. Yeah. Okay. So questions? Uh, yes, Tom. Hey, thank you, Suzanne, for your presentation. I just have a quick question about that transformer. Right now, it looks like it's kind of halfway or not halfway, a little bit in and, and a little bit out of the drawing. Um, will it be entirely outside of the fence or will the it's, fence be cut around it? No, it's going to be entirely outside. What we see in the drawing is the pad for the transform, yeah. the concrete okay. pad. So um, when I met with a hasty fence guy, um, we kind of struck a line um, from the end of the building there um, and, and we can ooch the fence right in back of the transformer. Okay. He kind of goes on top of the pad. He'll have to trim some of the bottom rails of the fence a little bit, but um, mm -hmm. the transformer will essentially be in that kind of situation like it is right in this picture. Okay. So. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jan, any comments or questions? Yeah, it looks fine to me. I move that we approve the application. Uh -huh. 
Oh, now we can discuss. Okay. <laughs> and Tom, do would do you wish to second that? I okay. did. Okay, so it's moved and seconded. Are there any uh, further questions or discussions? Looks all good. Right. That all in favor? Uh, I'll just do a little roll call. Tom? Approved. Okay, Jan? Yes. Catherine? Approves. Okay, Susan? <laughs> All right. See how right. easy it is to get a fence. Yeah, wow. This is easy. I'm an architect. I've done this my whole career. This is the easiest one ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so not all doing easy. all the jobs. There's nothing to complain about. It. Pretty simple right. request. Right. Yeah, I think, I think it is too. Yeah. So my next step then is to, I have the uh, planning board meets next week. So I need to do a Zoom with them. Is that right, Maureen? That is correct. Yes. Um, so um, you should be if you don't have a zoom link uh, or the agenda already we can um, I can email you the planning board agenda. Sure. Um, and, sure. um, and, uh, you know, you could perhaps, uh, you know, fill out the if there's a building permit application, you could certainly, you know, start drafting that and uh, start submitting that to well, we, the We wouldn't pull the building permit <clears throat> until after. Okay. That would be done by the fence installer. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. So, All right. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. We, want, we want him to take responsibility. For good. That. We want to take responsibility for good. that. So. All right. Take All care. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks. Well, thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks a lot. All right. Okay. Thanks, Bye. Yeah. So, so next, what do we have here? Uh, oh, next, uh, we have the uh, town more. of Amherst. Um, I don't have the agenda up just at the moment, okay. um, but we have Rob Mora who can uh, fill us in. So uh, there's a new gravel parking area being proposed oh, yes. right. uh, for, for one of our uh, town-owned conservation properties. So okay. I... All right, let's... All right. So if uh, Rob is with us, he can okay. um, sure. show you the um, parking area proposal. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, Rob Hello. Mora, Building Commissioner, yeah. um, helping the uh, Conservation Department here with their uh, continued effort to uh, improve visibility and safety to these uh, conservation area parking mm -hmm. locations. So uh, this is very similar to a plan that was... Uh, shown to you a couple of months ago for the Sweet Alice Trail conservation area. I don't know if anyone had a chance to see that yet, but it is complete and uh, is a good representation of what the finished product would be for uh, this parking area and others as we continue to work on these. Uh, in, the, in the top left corner is the, the area, uh, the parking shown in red, uh, the improved area in red. Uh, this, this location is uh, directly across from the intersection of Sunderland Road and Route 116. Um, and it is currently just a, a dirt driveway as, as seen in the uh, lower folder there, uh, where there isn't really any uh, good uh, parking area mm -hmm. designated uh, at that location. So uh, the middle uh, uh, plan shows our, our proposal. Uh, it is to create 13 new parking spaces. Uh, this is a uh, uh, kind of a shared parking area to two conservation areas, the Podic Conservation Area to the north and then the Coal Conservation Area to the south, uh, combined with a couple other parcels and some Hadley land, Kestrel Land Trust land. There's, a, there's a quite a bit of property here. Uh, I think there's over 100 acres owned by the town of Amherst uh, in, this, in this particular area. And uh, you can see in the hatching is the uh, dirt driveway that's shown on that lower photo to the left. And we're looking to uh, widen that out, uh, make it passable for uh, the vehicles to come and go, create 13 parking spaces. Uh, two of those would be accessible parking spaces. So number one and number 13 would be accessible. Again, we're trying to create two, two options to go north or south. Um, if we zoomed in a little bit, you could see where we're showing a kiosk on each end. Um, there's the south side a kiosk. Uh, bike loop, uh, hard to see, but we're going to put a bike rack in right next to the kiosk. Uh, and then the uh, uh, same thing up on the north side for the Podic Trail information. And this is a typical kiosk. Um, if we can go over to the right, we can see a picture of that. 
that's the the typical uh, conservation department kiosk that's been uh, being placed at all the, uh, the conservation areas. Generally, it shows a, a sign on the front identifying the uh, the trail access or location that they're at, and then there'll be uh, more uh, detailed information or history of the property on the backside. Uh, so we're creating a, a nice level flat surface all around both sides of the kiosks for that uh, information to be displayed. So these are gravel parking lots um, that uh, will be compacted and left in that condition. Uh, we are experimenting with striping, uh, although we're asking for uh, no striping or no delineation uh, as part of our site plan review applications. Uh, we've, we've gone out and painted a couple. Uh, they seem to last about four weeks. Uh, you know, the two that I've been involved in, I, I've already seen that the parking, you know, people have adapted to the parking configuration and orientation nicely. The, the painting of the lines helped a lot. Uh, it's something that we think the conservation staff will be able to maintain and uh, especially during, uh, you know, busy times of the year, uh, higher use times of the year that they could go out there every month or so and touch up paint. So that's going to be the plan going forward uh, with these um, with these parking areas. Uh, but uh, this is about 30 to 40 feet off of the edge of the right of way for 116. It's pretty heavily vegetated in that area where the where the hand is right now. We're not looking at clearing any any of the existing trees or brush, uh, just widening out that, that driveway path to that, to the, I guess that'd be to the east by four or five feet or so to make it a, an 18 foot travel path. Um, and yeah, so that's that's about it. If I have uh, any questions, okay. I'd be happy to answer them. So are the materials, the uh, gravel, what whatever you're putting down, is that the same as Sweet Alice? So we're sort of duplicating the, materials used at Sweet Alice. Yeah, say, we, yeah, we yeah, we are that that so that was hard pack uh, that we used at Sweet Alice and we are experimenting with a couple different materials. Okay. I, I don't know if you happen to see the Stanley Street lot, but that was an existing lot that just got refinished. It wasn't a new new parking area and that lot we used uh, processed gravel with a a top finish of TRG and the, the TRG just didn't compact as well as the hard pack okay. so it didn't get as firm. It left a little loose stone on the surface. So we tried this one here so far as, as you know, compacted really nicely and, and uh, it's held up pretty, it has held up well to the, to the rain that we got right after the, uh, as recent as a couple of days after it being installed. Uh, so we're gonna keep working with this material, I think is the plan. We might try to dress up the, the accessible parking area in paths with stone dust, which is just a little finer aggregate to kind of fill in some of the voids uh, might make it look a little bit more attractive as you, um, you know, access around the, the, the kiosks. But uh, I think right now the plan is to continue with the same material. So another question, uh, I'm just going back to Sweet Alice. Uh, we, there was that discussion about putting some, just sort of painting some lines on to sort of condition people to know where to park, but there, I don't recall a discussion whether you all were going to come, the town was going to come in and keep repainting them. But sounds like this lot, you're treating this a little differently. Is that right? You're going to come, maybe as you said during busy seasons, come back in and repaint some of those lines? Yes. Uh, right. So when I first proposed this, I had said that we weren't going to paint lines. I had even asked for a waiver from the planning board for that. Uh, design standard requirement. And then, uh, you know, I think there was a recommendation maybe from the DRB, could have been from the Conservation Commission actually, that thought that it'd be nice to try to delineate the parking spaces somehow. And, you know, it, particularly in the, in, in the Stanley Street lot that we did, we were really changing the way people parked and had been used to. So, you know, I just went ahead and found this, um, you know, this painting cart, which is something, you know, you might see out on a sporting field or something you know, with, um, with cans of paint and it, it didn't, it worked pretty well. Um, you know, it doesn't, it's not gonna last long. We, we talked to vendors that actually do the striping and painting. And the issue with their installation is that the pressure is so high that it doesn't really make the mark. It just kind of blows the gravel around. So they weren't really interested in, in, in doing it and thought it'd be, it wouldn't be really um, effective and worth it financially. So we found this inexpensive way to create markings that, and you can see here in this picture, 
you know, they're pretty visible. So it, it worked out, it worked out okay. Um, and, and it's easy enough and inexpensive enough that yeah. uh, I yeah. think we can uh, have staff uh, try to stay on top of it and maintain it during the year. And that's, that's going to be the goal. Okay. Uh, like I said, the one example before this one, uh, I watched it, it, it really stayed in good condition for about four weeks. And then it uh -huh. was, then it started to fall apart, you know, yeah. where it was harder to see the lines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I believe uh, Jan's raising her hand. Uh, Rob, uh, on Sweet Alice, we had talked about trash and recycling bins, um, and you were uncertain whether there'd be anybody to come regularly and um, empty them. What ended up happening with that? I, I see they aren't there. Nope, that, that was one of the recommendations that the DRB did make. I talked that over with the uh, assistant town manager, Dave Zomek, and he was really not interested in having uh, trash and recycling receptacles at these conservation areas. Uh, they're not in um, normal routes for the public works department that would be maintaining them and didn't feel like his staff was able to maintain those and really wanted to encourage, uh, you know, you bring it, take it with you. Um, uh, Is there any, any kind of sign that suggests that people should do that or do you end up having to pick up a lot? Um, I know the, the, the parking, the, the areas are regularly monitored by our field staff. Uh, so they would handle any pickup or cleaning. From what I understand, there is, it isn't a big problem. That's great. Uh, but I don't have much more information than that. Okay. Just curious because I didn't see it in the new proposal. So. Otherwise, it looks great to me. Yeah. Looks yeah. like Tom um, has raised his hand. Yeah, sure. I was just uh, had a question about the road sign um, that you show here, the typical signpost, um, the middle one there, and that's that's going to be something that's perpendicular to the road. We don't see that at Sweet Alice yet. Is that something we are going to do at Sweet Alice and here? I'm just curious. Yes, we are going to do that uh, at all the locations. The sign in the, the lower sign there, the red sign, uh, has been uh, designed by the town sign consultant. Yeah. Uh, you know, it will likely say Potic Coal at the top. You know, that's where the, the block out is, where it said Sweet Alice. Yeah. I don't have images of all the signs, but I think yeah. that, you know, that is the, the, the sign that was uh, approved by the assistant town manager and will be uh, fabricated to go on the signpost that's shown above and yes, it'll be, it'll be at this location. It'll be at all the locations eventually, Okay. okay. Uh, but none of them have been uh, uh, received yet. So okay. they're, they're on order. Great, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, okay, if not, do I hear a motion? I move that we approve the application. <laughs> and uh, I'll second. Uh, okay, the move mm -hmm. and seconded. Are there any further questions or comments? If not, I will do a roll call. Uh, Jan? Yes. Tom? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Okay. It's Erica's here. Oh, Erica's here. Did she, or, was she here for the whole presentation? Was here for the presentation. I heard the last bit of the discussion, although I have reviewed the documents. Okay. All right. Well, then, where would you like to vote? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Well, it's unanimous. We accept the uh, proposal. Okay, Anything thank else? you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming. All right. Okay, Take here's care. Erica. Hi. So far, it's been really exciting, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> I wish our planning board meetings went like this. <laughs> I've been moving things will. along. They so will from, yeah. Maybe they will from now on. <laughs> okay, uh, now what, Maureen? I, hold, hold on one second. Uh, Gabrielle, I'm gonna make you a panelist. Hold on one second. We have uh, Gabrielle Gould of uh, the Amherst uh, sure. BID Executive Director okay. who will be uh, presenting regarding the signage for our new music and art venue. So I'll go ahead, uh, Gabrielle, if you can introduce yourself, I'll pull up your, um, your application. Yeah. Hi, so Gabrielle Gould, I'm the Executive Director of the Amherst Business Improvement District, but I'm also the Executive Director of the Downtown Amherst Foundation, which is before you today for uh, a live performance and music venue that we are hoping to open in winter of 2022 in downtown Amherst um, called The Drake. Uh -huh. 
And you are showing the design review board, the proposed signage uh, for the Drake. Yes, so we would like, as everybody knows, or, or you, sh you probably can recognize, this is formerly known as the high horse, which uh, usually has a very long, skinny horse leg um, apparatus over in the right hand part of the brick. Um, our intention is to have the first floor leased out to a restaurant on one side, and the second floor, we are hoping for a farm to refrigerator market. So we want to leave more space for signage um, for those businesses. So we are going to take um, as little as possible at this moment, but we are the only business coming in right now. Um, that You will see that the um, sign has been, the logo and word mark have been designed by our local marketing firm, Tiger Web, um, and that the full logo is um, on the bank building Square, I guess that would be called, um, which is the Drake Live Performance and Music Venue. Uh, we are working with local artist Camille Peters to build and design um, the, uh, the, the piece that will be hanging on the building, and that will be all done with uh, freehand metalwork. And the four that will go into the bank building square will be a high I, I think it's a high polymer. Um, we wanted to do metal, but I guess people come and break it. Um, and sort of take chunks off. So we're going to go with something that is a little bit less attractive for people to want to chip away at um, and also something that we can replace should we need to if it gets um, vandalized. Okay, I'm, uh, do we have a picture, uh, Maureen, of what it looks like? The I'm building? pulling it up right now. Yeah, okay, because I... Okay, so... Um... Oh, you know what? Let me okay. do a new screen right. in case we want to do something side by side. Okay, so we'll start with the um, the freestanding yeah. sign. Right. Um, so that's the high horse panel, if you will, and it is three sided, Gabrielle. It's actually four sided. Um, four -sided? The back side that oh, you yeah. see right there is just so yep. broken that it doesn't look like it has something in it. Yep. Okay, and then okay. let me back up here. And then okay. we have the walls. The, okay. ah, ah, sorry. Oh, oh, bear with me. I don't know where we are. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Let's do that again. <clears throat> so Gabrielle, does the second floor get, can it be accessed by that walkway? Okay. It, it, we are building 100% ADA accessible and compliant. On the second floor. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Live music and performance space. Uh, um, so that's what we're currently All looking right. at. Yeah, okay. okay, yeah. All right. So the existing wall sign is the lettering in the, yeah. the horse. And uh, I believe Tom has raised his hand. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Gabrielle. I, I just have a question about the other locations. So I just want clarification. The, the lower level is all new businesses that are not yet there. And we'll have their own signage and other things that we'll need. So right now we're only focused on the upper floor primary sign and single sign on the corner. There's no other wayfinding to get people up there or any of that stuff. No signs on the door or the front door or any of that. Um, we actually, um, we will be replacing the doors um, that, that will, I'm sorry. Marie, is there any way you could go back to the front oh, sure, yeah. that you had? I'm, I'm sorry. Um, no, if you no, look, worse. you'll see where that air conditioner is that will be coming out. Those doors are for ADA, ADA compliance are going to be two doors that open out um, onto the walkway and will yeah. open completely so that a wheelchair will come in. So that will be the main entrance. I feel fairly confident that we will be putting a decal on those doors, um, but that is not being presented to you at this moment. Thank we you. probably should have done that, but we don't have a rendering of the doors yet. Um, June Riddle is doing the architectural design for the interior. So, <clears throat> so but it would it, be safe to say that the decal would have this sort of, you know, logo. It, it will. It will be that exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so, did uh, you say the music's on the second floor or the first floor? We will only be inhabiting the second floor. We have oh, completely okay. gutted it and turned it into an open space and we'll be building a state-of-the-art stage with 
uh, sound and lighting. Oh, equipment. okay, okay. In, and in the Africa, okay. oh, oh, sorry. So there's, um, if you want, I could go down the street and show you. So there is a, a ramp um, that you can access the music venue from the at the corner of Amity and right. North Pleasant Street, and then uh, on, and then on North Pleasant Street there are stairs. So you, there could be two and you know two yeah. uh, routes to the the main door, which will be located um, at this door here on this on the second floor. Okay. Okay. And there will be a second means of egress on the opposite side of the building. Yeah. And then you said it's going to be a restaurant restaurant along on the second floor is that right i just trying to no oh. um the upstairs will be a performance okay. a, a bar and performance venue only the downstairs we are hoping to secure a lease for an incoming restaurant we're working on that right now okay and you said something about a farmer's market i or did i blank out did you say a market yeah. Um, so this is Barry Roberts's building, and we are working with him right now to divide the first floor into okay. a smaller restaurant. And yes, our goal is to get a farm to fridge market in the Okay, market. all right, okay. But, but those are not signed leases yet, so we're, right. we're not yeah, going to okay. count those chickens. They have not had. Sure. Okay. Can I jump in with a question? Um, yeah. So super excited about this, like, I hope the fundraising campaign is going really well. Um, I wanted to ask about the rationale of putting the Drake's sign um, on the left rather than in the center where the stone is. Um, it seems to me that this is the kind of the anchor institution. Um, it's exciting. It's really wonderful. And um, why you're proposing to put it over on the left side uh, instead of in the middle. Our, our thoughts on that were that it kept it sort of closer to our entrance and kind of demarcated that this was us and then that we figure if another business is coming in downstairs, they would take the right brick and allow the stone to be clean. Um, and that the market would take the signage above their market and not be up on the top of the building. We're not opposed to having it on the stone. We just wanted to make sure that um, we gave enough space for other businesses to brand and market themselves. Uh -huh. Also, we felt like this from way down, like when you're coming around Amity, this is the first thing you'll see is that corner. Um, and we're hoping that it's very eye-catching and that's what the backlighting for the metal sign will do. That makes some that makes some sense. I mean, I, I I appreciate that. I'm thinking if it's just if you only have two signs up there and they're both in the square format mm -hmm. in the same size, um, then leaving the that center stone area blank could, could yeah. work. Yeah. Um, but it feels it feels like the sign right now, like the stone is the sign. <laughs> um, but it sounds like that second that that restaurant lease may be very much in progress, and so it's not long till another sign goes up, right? Um, well, we're we're a five hundred one c three and running this as a nonprofit, and um, the landlord has been exceedingly generous on a very long term lease with us. So we want to make sure that the business underneath that will be pay, paying fair market value rent has enough space to brand and market themselves. And although we're the first ones in, we definitely want to. Um, defer and the goal of this organization and of the Drake is to complement and be an economic driver for downtown. Um, so we don't want to take anything away from anybody. Uh -huh. So what's there now? <laughs> is, is that used for anything right now? The second floor? This has been empty since pre-COVID. It's been over okay. two years. Yeah, I don't know if any, I never knew what was up there. So that's, yeah. it, it's been vacant for a long time. Yeah. <clears throat> and so if judging for size, if you've been in the lower level, which was the high horse, um, is that about the same size as the upper level or is there another extension on the upper level? I'm just thinking. Uh, believe it or not, the lower level is much bigger. It is a sort of honeycomb of interesting spaces and rooms. Right. Um, it can it yeah. can get a little uh, maze like down there. Uh -huh. Our space is about four thousand square feet. We have demoed every wall that's not holding up the building to make it a sort of big, beautiful open space, good for um, spoken word, poetry, classical music, jazz, rock and roll, uh -huh. sort of a, a catch-all. Um, and we a have lot three. Of space. 
Yeah. It, it is, it's a good amount of space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jan, do you have any uh, thoughts, questions? No, I like it. I, I like the logo. I think it's a very clever play on the bass clef, treble clef, note. It's, it's, it's fun and it still use, makes the D. So I think yeah. it's very sharp. It's yeah. good. I, I thought it was a slice of the moon, but <laughs> still it's good, whatever. No, it's revised to the music. <laughs> <laughs> Jan, I, I love that you saw that because John Kuhn and I were sitting in here today and he said, do you think anybody's going to get that that's a play off the bass clef? <laughs> oh, definitely. I hear someone got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah and it also it. has the curl at the end of the treble, so you're playing with both. And, yeah. you know, I think it, it's it's very, very yeah. nice. Good, good. I think Tom um like to ask something or say something. Yeah, yeah. sure. I was just... um for some reason these kinds of um sort of longer facades that you're working with i still have an issue maybe about whether or not we can locate your front door and i'm just wondering if maybe a blade sign um that's perpendicular to the front of the building that might be illuminated might actually be helpful like anywhere along that line on the upper level to really draw people up there because you know if your sign is up and there's another sign that's also up there people might not correlate it as this one's up and this one's down. And so some other kind of perpendicular blade sign along those posts, um, yeah, out front, um, somewhere along there might cue people into, oh, I have to go up these stairs to get up there. So I just feel like the wayfinding process of getting there, you might wanna consider like when you're standing across the street or at the corner, will I know that I need to get upstairs to this location? Because even the D that's on the facade illuminated at night, if you're standing on the corner, you still might not see it um, yeah. because it's flush with the facade. But if you turn that perpendicular and you have a blade sign that has the Drake, you know, written sideways or something like that, it can be only a few inches deep, but still catch people's eye in a way that your current sign might not. So, um, yeah, as, as Maureen was pointing out, those posts right outside your building there might be a good place to think about something that's perpendicular, which is what you'd see on a a more linear approach like that. Okay. Or even a lit sign right on the brick next to the door. You know, on yeah. the left, I would in put there. it on the left. Yeah. Not hidden, yeah, right there where that light, that sunlight is, you know. Something like that might even be enough, but I agree, Tom, that would be. Yeah, I agree too. Would we come back, to, if we were given permission tonight to move forward with the bank, square um, down on the corner and the sign on the front of the building. Would we come back to you for a sign on the building in that spot where the sunlight was hitting? Any additional signs on the door, on the walls, technically you're supposed to come back. Okay, great, we could do that. Yeah. Okay, any other comments or questions? All right. Um, I would just I would just say that, that when you do your graphic for the door or however you want to approach that, you can piggyback another sign on that meeting. You'd have to have a meeting to put up the the graphic on the on the front door anyway. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. That is fine. Sure. Very good. I move we approve the application. All right. Is there a second? Erica. Erica said. Okay. Been moved and seconded. Any further questions or discussions? If not, I'll do a roll call. Uh, Tom? Aye. Jan? Yes. Erica? Yes, she, second, yes. And Catherine, yes, okay. <laughs> so it's been unanimous. And uh, now all you have to do is get the jazz band in there. <laughs> We've got them. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks, okay. Colleen. Thank you. See ya. <clears throat> okay. So our next item um, is with uh, Downstairs LLC. And um, the applicant is um, is not, uh, he had a, uh, a conflicting um, meeting at five and he said he couldn't meet us until six. Um, and I had said, well, if you can't make it, I can um, present, but if you can, that would be helpful. So, um, I guess since he's not here, I'll I'll go ahead and, and present on sure. his behalf, okay. and maybe he'll he'll uh, sneak in or join us. Okay, so let me pull this up, and it's uh, Greg Stutzman um, is uh, the applicant.
representing Downstairs LLC. Let's see here. And um, let me go. It's to update the existing awnings with the uh, messaging uh, on those awnings. And it is, um, uh, let's see here. It is along, is it on Amity? Uh, what, sorry, what street is this? This is 30 Boltwood Walk. Uh, unit one, and it is where uh, currently the awning does have messaging for Kaju, the ramen uh, uh, restaurant. Um, uh, Greg Stutzman is um, moving on from uh, Kaju and is um, reconfiguring the interior to add a uh, uh, three different uses, I believe. One being his uh, uh, real real estate business, uh, its existing business, uh, brick and mortar realty. Um, this is his uh, existing logo for his business uh, and branding, um, which is shown here on the, the proposed um, um, messaging for the uh, awning. And other uses inside include a speakeasy and a um, like a catering business that would not be providing um, food for the public. It's it's for private events and 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 the like, I, I believe. Um, and so. Um, at this time, he's only proposing signage for the realty business, um, and he's intentionally having a low profile for the speakeasy, which is a common thing about speakeasies. <laughs> I mean, if you, so people just know to go there, because he's saying it's not going to have a sign for it. Is that? I believe so. Uh, so perhaps maybe down the line, uh, he could, you know, <clears throat> reconsider that, but I, the intention yeah. is to have a low profile for the speakeasy. And I guess if we read together, uh, the details, let me, let's see here. Um, so the, it's aluminum panel painted to match the existing awning secured to awning framing with pop uh, rivets, uh, paint to match and uh, has a white vinyl logo. Um, and that that's applicable for both the messaging on the, the front and on the side. Okay. All right. Uh, that looks a little gray. Is he, is he proposing gray as opposed to black? I noticed that myself. It looks isn't it, isn't it the same awning with just new text? It is. Oh, okay. I thought it was probably either old. faded or it's the light. Of, yeah. Know. Well, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So, okay. Looks well, fine. I wonder how he does. Wonder how he does that with the fabric. But all right. Um, questions from the board? We can only or comments. I guess we can't uh, question him right now. Any thoughts? Looks fine. It looks fine. Looks a little drab, but uh, I don't have a big. <laughs> it gets like across the message. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I think it's in line with what's there now. So it's right. Not yeah. It's changed yeah, the, the landscape. It's not bright yeah. green or anything crazy. Yeah, that's right. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, the, the existing materials is a good thing right now. So. Uh huh. Uh huh. Erica, did you have a comment? Uh, I just I think it's nice that it's lit at night. So yeah, fine. Okay. I move we approve the application. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I, I've been moved by Jan. Is there a second? second. Erica seconds. Okay, moved and seconded. Seconded. Any further comments or any questions you want to pose? If not, uh, we'll have a roll call. Tom. Uh, Erica. Yes. Jan? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Okay. All right. We love it. And I, at the last minute, I emailed you two draft meeting minutes. Uh, I don't know if anyone got a chance to read them. No. Okay. That's fine. Um, we can, and it wasn't, I, I didn't get a chance to add it to the agenda. I was going to suggest that you could review it under um, items not anticipated within 48 hours, but that's fine. We could add it to the the next meeting agenda. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and then Maureen, um, I'm probably going off after this meeting if the person on historical commission who has said she might be willing to be the rep takes, agrees at our next meeting. We gave her oh. a month to decide. Oh, okay. Uh, I just have too much right now and I need to pull back on some stuff. 
Sure, makes well, sense. That's not good news. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to make a lot of motions really quick. The rest of you I know. <laughs> Train a new person. <laughs> I, I do know that there is a uh, proposed restaurant slash night club that should be uh, submitting a, uh, an application, which I don't know is I don't know if that'll be tomorrow or next week, but um, I'll touch base, base with Ben and and yourself, Jan, of, to see where you are with um, if we can squeeze in one okay. more meeting with you or not. <laughs> All right. OK. Oh, just one other question I had was, um, did that secondhand clothing store open up what, you know, where uh, the Knights of Columbus building is? Yeah. The, it did. It was open pre-COVID. I don't. Yeah, I haven't been back. There I would guess so it's never, it didn't again. open again. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, so did we have anybody from the public that wanted oh. to make a, a comment? I don't. Oh, oh, Greg Stutzman. Greg, we already approved it. So no need. Okay. Um, I won't. Uh, so, all right. So you, uh, Greg, you can stay, which we're about to end our meeting, but um, I'll email you tomorrow with the the very brief memo, they liked it. <laughs> okay, so any um, uh, any pub any other anybody else from the public that you can see? No, nope, okay. no, no, right. no one else. Well, then, do I hear? I think that's all the business we have. Do I hear a motion that we adjourn? Should I make one more before I go? One off? more, <laughs> one more for the road. <laughs> I move we adjourn the meeting. All right. It's been moved. It's a second. Okay. okay, it's moved and seconded. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. Well, very good. Enjoyed working with you all. If I don't oh, see Jan, you again. we'll miss you. Bye, Jan. <laughs> yeah. Bye, Dan. Bye. Bye. Available. You can always find me. <laughs>